Tubeless tires have become a standard on many bikes around the world today, offering lower rolling resistance as well as increased flat protection. If that sounds appealing to you, this video is going to walk you through how to set up the tubeless system on your bike. Hello, I'm Truman with Park Tool Company. And I'm Calvin with Park Tool Company. If you're new to tubeless systems, check out this repair help article on tubeless tire standards and compatibility before going any further. At their most basic, current tubeless systems include a tubeless ready rim, tubeless tape, a set of valves, a tubeless tire, and some tubeless sealant. When all these are set up correctly, you're going to have a well-functioning system that has some advantages over the tube systems. Such as lower rolling resistance, as well as the ability to run lower tire pressure without getting pinch flats. Let's have a more detailed look at the supplies, parts, components, and things you're going to need to set this up correctly. For setting up tubeless tires, you'll need tire levers, soapy water, isopropyl alcohol, a pick set like the upset from Park Tool, lint-free cloth, scissors, VC1 valve core tool, a syringe for injecting sealant like the Park Tool TSI one, a pump or a compressor, and a wheel holder like the WH1 can make everything just a little bit easier. As far as the component parts of the tubeless system go, you have some options. Let's start with tubeless tape. There's a lot of different tapes out there, but the core thing you're looking for is the width. It should be one to two millimeters wider than the inner width of your rim. That extra width is gonna be taken up in the drop channel or valley of your rim, with the end goal being that the tape goes from rim wall to rim wall. And while you might get some non-tubeless specific tape to work, we recommend sticking to the tubeless tapes just to be safe. You'll also need a valve. Some things to consider are that it needs to seat nicely against the rim. You'll also need to make sure that it's long enough for the depth of your rim. We also find that it's important to have a removable valve core. Schrader valves like these are also an option. Check out this video for installing Schrader valves. And you're going to need a tubeless ready or tubeless compatible tire. Typically says so right on the tire. And sealant is typically required. There are many on the market to choose from. And finally, you need wheels that are also tubeless compatible. If in doubt, check with the rim manufacturer. It's important to note if you have a hookless rim. A hookless rim lacks the hook that's on the inside of the rim wall. If you have a hookless rim, be sure to cross-check compatibility of your choices with both the tire and rim manufacturers. Not all tubeless tires are compatible with all hookless rims. Truman, we've got our parts, our supplies, components. Let's get started. Let's start with some cleaning and some wheel prep. If your wheels came with an inner tube and a rim strip like this one, remove it. This strip here is not intended to provide an airtight seal. Even if your rims are new, follow the same cleaning procedures as there can be leftover lubricant or surface prep from the factory. Clean up any dirt or contamination on the rim so that the new tape can adhere nicely. Do this with a lint-free cloth or rag and isopropyl alcohol. Once your rim is clean and dry, it's time to start taping. Remember, we're looking for our tape to be a little bit wider from inside to inside, wall to wall in our rim. Start your tape opposite from the valve. Grab the rim and lay down about 30 centimeters or 12 inches of tape. Then move your hand and do the same process till you have gone around the rim two complete rotations. Drag your thumb along the tape to ensure proper adhesion to the rim.
Once you have the rim tape all laid down, you can now make a nice clean cut with your scissors. Again, opposite from the valve. Once cut, make sure you push down the end so the tape adheres nicely. Now use a clean towel or rag to push down on the rim tape firmly to make sure it is getting good adhesion all the way around the rim. Try to eliminate as many of these bubbles under the tape as possible. Once you've installed the tape, it's time to install your valve. Use a pick to poke a hole in the middle of the valve hole. Do not hold your hand under the valve hole while poking the hole. As an optional professional touch, you can use a small file to clean up the hole. A half round file used for filing points or a small jeweler's file can be used for this. Now, take your valve and push it through the hole you just made. Sometimes valves come with O-rings. These are to protect the rim from tiny scratches, not to make the valve airtight where the valve exits the rim. We highly recommend getting rid of the O-ring. Air pressure should be in the tire as seen here. If there is any leak in the rim tape, air can escape into the rim cavity where it is not designed to be, and there can be explosive results. Push down on the back side of the valve to seat it. While pushing on the back side of the valve, install the valve nut snugly. Not too tight though. Finger tight is just right. Next, we'll install the tire. Mount according to any directional arrows you find. It's a nice practice to line up the tire pressure label or the logo with the valve. This makes a reference point when diagnosing issues later and you need to take off the tire. Install the first bead starting opposite the valve, pushing the bead into the drop channel of the rim. Keeping the bead in this channel gives you more slack at the bead, making the tire easier to get on. Move the bead along towards the valve and pop on this first sight. With the first sight done, start installing the second bead, again starting opposite the valve. Continue to work toward the valve and- Stop, 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 stop. If you're not gonna be injecting your sealant and you're gonna be pouring it in, now's the time to do that with the tire about three quarters installed. Give your sealant a good shake and pour in the appropriate amount, typically two to four ounces. Once the fluid is installed, rotate the tire so the open section is at the top. Now, continue to install the tire. Push, push, push as you continue. Keep checking that the tire is in the channel. This second side can be even tougher than the first bead. Try your best to do this without any tire levers. If tire levers are needed, use them like this while preventing the other bead from slipping. Success. Once you have the tire on fully, double check that the beads are on the correct side of the valve. But the valve needs to be between the beads and should not be seen like here. Truman, where are we at? Well, I have already poured sealant into my tire. I've got no sealant in my tire, so I'm gonna to need to inject. Whether you've already poured your sealant in or will be injecting your sealant momentarily, the next step in the process is gonna be seating your tire. And that process is the same between both methods. Remove the valve core. This helps get air into the tire quickly. Apply some soapy water to the bead on both sides. This can help seal up the bead to rim interface. Now to inflate. You may hear loud popping noises as it seats into place. However, be sure not to exceed the maximum pressure for the tire or rim. You can tell that the tire is seated on the rim by the way that it is. Looking at the bead line of the tire as it follows the rim, it should be consistently visible on the same distance from the rim the whole way around. If the bead is still not seating properly, try to deflate reapply soapy water, and then re-inflate and inspect. If it is still not working, be sure to check out our tubeless tire troubleshooting video. After inflating and seeing the bead is seating, release the pressure. For those injecting, give your sealant of choice a good shake before drawing out the sealant, typically two to four ounces, and inject it through the valve into the tire. Reinstall the valve core. Inflate the tire. Having the pressure a little higher than you would normally ride can help push the sealant into any anomalies in the tire or tape 
and make for a better seal. Again, do not exceed the max pressure. Now we shake. Shake that tire and rotate it around to coat the inside of the tire and rim with sealant. You may see small white dots on some tires. That is the sealant filling tiny voids in the tires and is considered to be normal. Another distribution technique is to lay it horizontally, let it sit a few hours to distribute it, then flip it, and again, we are going to let it sit. One of the best final ways is to actually ride it. Flexing that casing and working it as it spins, it's a good way to work the sealant into all the pores inside the tire body. And also make sure to check your tire pressure before each ride. Especially in these first few weeks of the tire's life, and this setup can lose a little bit of pressure. Uh, so you wanna make sure to put that in before your next ride. Congratulations to all of you, we will toast you. Cheers. And we'll see you guys later. If you're still having problems seating your tires, check out our troubleshooting vi video, as well as leave some comments below, and we'll see you guys next time.